but what about our guests? What do their automations look like for the abandoned cart scenario? Here's what Don had to say about Made for Freedom. Awesome. And, and you mentioned three, three emails. Yeah. Could you, could you say like a little bit about the, the spacing or the time between those three emails? I f- think they were the ones recommended by Active Campaign. Oh, okay. So you just, did you leave the, the wait steps the same as they are in the, in the recipe? I'm pretty sure. Yes. Awesome. Okay. I can and... double check that for you. Oh. <laughs> I can do anything for you, Ernie. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> we just met three minutes ago, but we're like best buds now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, well, hey, while you're looking for that, what, yep. have the results of the, the abandoned cart automation, what, what have those been like? Um, and you can speak to, you know, the one that you have running currently or the one before then as well. Well, the one that I have running now has mm-hmm. done has done really well. What I what I love is the percentage, like the open rate mm. has been forty two point eight percent. Oh wow! Which is awesome. And so, since in this past seven months, and this it's done well. Um, the percentages sound better. We've had some significant issues with marketing and Facebook jail over the past several months. So the number of emails that have gone out is not quite what I would like, but it has brought in almost $500 of revenue, even though our online sales have tanked because of Facebook jail issues. Interesting. I'm sorry to hear about all that. (laughs) Way more than you wanted to hear, but... (laughs) No, no, no. I mean, that's, that's the, you know, that's the, the real world. That's the, the case for a lot of businesses, I would imagine at this moment in time with all those, those changes and everything that's going on. Um, I guess, so prior to Facebook jail, um, were the results, the results were noticeable then of the abandoned car automation. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Before then, and and maybe you could speak to this before the the previous one too. um, What was it like before then? I mean, in terms of knowing, um, did you have, insight into how many carts were being abandoned and sort of not being able to communicate with them? Or, or can you, can you speak to life before the abandoned cart automation? Well, before this one, I actually was using my own okay. and it wasn't, it wasn't as effective. You know, I didn't see as many conversions coming from that. And I think part of it was the timing. Part of it was the number of emails, you know, reminding people, people are busy. Right. And they might miss the first one. And if I, if you're only sending out one and it got missed, then it's gone. You know, so I liked, I liked the template that I found and the timing on that one is once they, it's like 30 minutes. If someone has not purchased, it's 30 minutes later, there's the first email Mm -hmm. and then it waits one day and then it waits one more day. Okay. And it's kind of a, did you forget something? And then the next day your card is on sale and we offer them a coupon. And then the last day says last chance. Mm. And, you know, and it's, it, it is, it's kind of, we're not going to bother you forever, right? but just in case you forgot, you have a cart waiting. So I, yeah, I think, I think it's working well because it's, we and we very much went with a new branding. I was working with a new marketing person and she really kind of gave a new look to our email templates, the emails that we send out and the emails in this. So it very much goes with the branding of what our new look is. So I think that is helpful as well. Yeah, creating that that consistent experience across all the different channels. Of those three emails, is there one that performs particularly well? Are they all sort of like, I mean, obviously everybody is different and, you know, it might be the 30 minute one for some and the, the one two days later for others, but uh, is the conversion rate across all three of those relatively consistent or how, how does that look? It actually, it goes, the first one open rate is highest. Okay. And then the second one is a little lower and then the third one is a little lower than that. Mm, okay. But they're all, they're all pretty. Yeah. The third one is a 20% open rate. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, um, so they're all working. That's awesome. They are all working and they, they're being opened. Three emails spaced out across a few days. 
first, just a reminder, and then an incentive. But as Don said, each of them performs well. Each email gets opened. What do they actually look like? Now, to find out, we actually abandoned a cart on Made for Freedom's website. Sorry, Don, it was for science. And here's what they look like. Here's email one. A uh, straightforward, gentle reminder. A nice image and consistent branding, as Don mentioned. Not only that, but the image of the product and the whole cart is included at the bottom of the email, providing a visual reminder of the product as well. And here's email two, the introduction of the sale. This image is actually a GIF, or a GIF, we're not getting into it, that rotates a carousel of three images, including the promo code and reminding you that the card is on sale. This creates urgency with a 24-hour time limit, provides an incentive, and again, shows the project, product. And finally, email three, the last chance email. As Don mentioned, none of these emails are overly salesy. They're not pushy. They're not a hard sell. They're simple and to the point. You put this in your cart, here it is, and hey, here's a discount for you. Hi, thank you for watching. If you are enjoying Growth Decoded, you can find a link in the description to sign up and join the Grow team. You'll get exclusive content and opportunities that have to do with the show. You can also hit the subscribe button for Active Campaign's YouTube channel somewhere down here, and you will never miss an update from us.